So you're uh, on the short list for uh, manager of the month. It's a strange one because I guess it includes the two games in March and the two games in June. So not not the West Ham game. So you should be four wins out of four should be in with a chance of winning it, shouldn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah. I've still got West Ham in my head, so I was <laughs> <laughs> slightly surprised. But no, it's it. It's um, something, you know, a small thing to be proud of. These are not the huge important things, but if it shows our good form, five wins in five in that period, uh, playing some good stuff, obviously it was disappointing against West Ham, we know that, but uh, before that we've been on a good run. So that's always a, a collective award. You know, as a manager, you can take it personally, but it's more work of the uh, the players and the staff included. Um, it's an anniversary uh, tomorrow when you play Watford, 4th of July, you've lived in America, you know how big the 4th of July is, but an extra meaning for you, because it'll be a year to the day that you were officially announced as the Chelsea head coach manager. Been an eventful year, hasn't it? Cool, yeah, yeah, it, cer- it certainly has, um, and something I'm very proud to, to be doing and to be offered the opportunity to do one year ago. Um, feels like a, a long time ago, but at the same time, it's flown by. It's one of those, there's a lot that's happened, a lot of crazy circumstances for everybody but um, the experience alone of being Chelsea manager has been a great one um, there's a lot of work to do so I, I can sort of think about it and have some some good and some not so good memories in the year but I'm very much more focused on what the next year's ahead look like. Is there anything at all you can think of straight away that you would have done differently? Well there were all always lots, lots of little things you know football is uh, at, this, at this end the, the, the result doesn't always mirror your work or what you expect or for whatever reason things can change. So I think you can always look back. I'm, I'm very much one to look over decisions I make or the way I, I work or we work and, uh, and try and analyse it um, and maybe you think differently in, uh, with retrospect, but uh, not really. I, I look forward. Um, if there are any things that haven't quite gone to plan, we'll work to get them better for the future. I know you don't like talking this time, very, very busy mini-season about the transfer window. But I'm just going to ask you one, if I may. Uh, Emerson, uh, we're reporting, or certainly Sky Italy are reporting, talks between Inter and Chelsea about Emerson. Obviously, Conti now at, at, at Inter. Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of the talks. Um, what I am doing is focusing on the team and the squad day to day. I don't have any real conversations about the transfer window, whether it's who we might bring in, who, who might leave the club. Those are obviously questions we do have to answer come the end of the season when the window opens. But I certainly don't want to be swayed by a rumour or gossip and uh, and I'm not involved in it, so we'll keep working. I'm sure you saw the game uh, last night. Not for the first time, some controversy, but this one seems to have really caused uh, 100% uh, outrage, I guess is not too strong a word, ruining the game. Some people have said no common sense use. I'm talking obviously about the Lucas Moura before Harry Kane. Uh, Tottenham none go. What's your view on it? Yeah, I, di- I didn't think it should be disallowed. Um, there have been lots of instances this season. They go for you, they go against you. I never feel bad. I never feel, well, when I listen to managers com- complaining or moaning, I understand it. Emotionally, it's really tough to take when decisions like that, even if the result doesn't quite follow in that moment, they can be game-changing in different ways. So, um, I-, I also have sympathy for the referees and, and the VAR officials in this case because there are rules that have been laid down. Um, so I think it was certainly one where common sense could have been involved. But if the rule book states something, um, then the handball is given. So I, I think we, re- we need a big reflection at the end of the season. I think VAR has improved us in ways, but there are ways to improve it. And I think a, a collective sit down at the end of the season with, with everybody, referees, managers, players, anybody involved in football who loves the game is, can have an input to try and get it closer to where we want to get it to. Watford haven't had a, the start to the restart that they would have wished for? No, but it doesn't matter to us. They're a dangerous team. Um, I think with Nigel Pearson, they've shown um, uh, uh, a real desire to get out of trouble. He came in at a really tough time. There's a spirit within them. So I think the results, I won't pay attention too much to recent results. I think um, restart's been difficult for different clubs in different ways. And um, we must take the, the, the game on its merits, know that they have. Uh, a very good side, know that they're desperate for points. We come unstuck against a team in a similar situation a few days ago. So we, we should be fully aware of the dangers of the game. Just finally from me, Frank, I've been reading uh, about um, Blue Fuel. Um, apparently it's an offshoot of, of, of Chelsea Football Club. They're producing uh, 
sports nutrition range, but they claim that the, that you guys, that the players, have helped develop it and have been using it. Is is that right? Yeah, that is that is right. And um, the players and the nutritionists we got here, we've got top class nutritionists and sports science department. Uh, we're fortunate enough to work at that level with them. Um, so it is in conjunction with them. The players have trialled it. I've trialled it myself. And the players use it, to be fair, uh, the men's team and the women's team. So it's something that's a collective we're, I say, pretty proud of. I think it's a, a product that's there for hopefully uh, elite sports, but beyond that for, for anybody who's, uh, who's interested in, in fitness, um, individual sports, team sports. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a positive from the club. I think, it, um, yeah, we're, we're very happy that we're using it and um, we're behind it. Now we go to Moose at Talk Sport. Hi, Frank. Hi, Moose. You all right? Good, thank you. Um, what would you have learnt from the defeat at West Ham the other night ahead of the game with Watford? Well, as I just mentioned, Moose, I think it's uh, a team that are fighting for their lives, that are physical, that have a real desire to get points to stay up. Um, and even though we had a lot of ball at West Ham, we, we didn't create quite enough as I'd like. Um, so we need to create more. Um, and then we... We made too many individual errors that, that gave them goals. Um, and that, any team in the Premier League, that's going to be tough. So we, we haven't shown that side of us uh, in restarts so much. I wasn't overly, well, wasn't overwhelmed with our Leicester performance, but um, the, the 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 absolute errors that we made that led to the goals are something we can't do. Gary Neville slated Marcus Alonso for the winning goal about not getting back quickly enough on Yarmolenko. But generally, a fullback's now on the pitch to defend, right when your dad played, or are they on the pitch as auxiliary attackers but who can defend? Well, they have a responsibility to do both, um, and that's important. And, and, and it's not easy with isolated, like you say, slatings. It's uh, much easier to comment from afar. Um, we, do, we do try and play football. We're trying to be uh, progressive, but of course we don't do that at the idea of, of wanting to concede goals. Um, and recovery runs are a huge part of football, and the players must do them whether it's the first minute or the 90th minute. So I don't think it's it'd be quite fair to to just look at Marcus in that isolated incident. Yes, he can recover. We can recover better as a team. But that has to be something fundamental to the team. You have to run backwards as, run as, as much as you run fast forwards. Um, and you have to have that desire to make difficult runs. Sometimes they're sideways runs, whatever it is, to help the team. Now, I can't complain about the team with that this year. As I say, when you isolate one goal that's so crucial because it wins the points, fair enough. But I know with my players that generally we have a desire to to press very well off the ball and when it goes beyond us generally to recover and get there and it was a game where we slipped up and not just that mistake but other mistakes and we lost the game for it. John Southall, BBC Five Live. Hi Frank. Hi John. Um, as, as Gary mentioned, it's a year since you've been in the job. Um, how much have you learnt over that year? Has it been a steep learning curve for you? Um, you always learn so I've learned for sure when you come into a job even though I knew the club well I didn't know the, the, the current squad so well Some certain things have changed you come up against different challenges every week uh, it's not just because I'm in my first year here at the club managing that I learn every manager learns all the time I did at Derby last year so it's uh, it's been enjoyable um, yeah lots of things I'll learn and I'll continue doing so I'm sure as you say you learnt from Wednesday night but how, how frustrating is it at this stage of the season I know we've had a big break but we're still talking about the same defensive frailties there Yeah it's it's frustrating because um, I talk a lot this year about both ends of the pitch I think some of our performances a lot of our performances there's not many times I sit down after a game and I did after Leicester and of course after West Ham and I can and it feels more negative than positive it's not been that way and a lot of our issues in that case have been not being clinical enough in front of goal. I've said that so many times um, and making individual errors defensively. And um, it's something we, we, we have to put right if we want to start looking at closing the gap upwards. Alex Elgeri, Premier League Productions. Cool. Hi, Frank. Hi. What's the latest team news ahead of tomorrow? How's Fikayo getting on? Yeah, Fikayo is still not, not fit. Um, he's hopefully going to be training with us uh, somewhere for next week. Um, and he's doing a lot of work. He just, in terms of the last bit to get him on a training pitch, has been tough. Um, and Kovacic is is going to be out of this game. He uh, he hurt his Achilles uh, during the West Ham game, and we'll miss this one possibly the next one after that. Hopefully, it won't be too long after that. And earlier, you mentioned that good run before the West Ham game, five wins in a row in all comps. Will it be easy to get that good momentum going again? Are you confident? 
Yes, I am. Um, I'm confident. Um, it's going to be tough. Um, West Ham result or no West Ham result, every game now is going to be a tough one. Uh, if we go into it with the, the right attitude that we approach games like Aston Villa and Manchester City and, and Everton and Liverpool before the break, um, then I have real belief in us. So it's about getting our mentality right. It's about keeping freshness in the players in between games and having a real desire to to achieve what we want. And we know it's pretty clear now what we want. We want to get in the Champions League spots. We have the FA Cup coming up. So there's there's no time to drop those levels. Nick Purell, PA. Hi, Frank. Thanks for your time. Um, when when pundits do um, comment on individual players' uh, situations like that, how hard is it for the individual player to deal with? And, you know, with Marcus in this situation, do you, is it something you would talk to him about? Do you need to talk to him about or just make sure he's OK and can put it out of his mind and... Keep moving forward. No, I, I haven't spoken to him about it, and I think it's a dangerous game to to comment on every pundit because you'd have to probably have conversations with all your players every week, um, and that's the nature of the beast, you know, and what we do. So yes, if I if I felt that a player needed help or or um, support in those situations, I would do. Um, I think we as ourselves, as players, and myself as my job, are probably the biggest self critics. We analyse games, we go over them, we talk with the players individually or collectively. Um, and that's my main focus, not so much what, what comes from outside. Okay, last question, Jerry Cox. Hi, Frank. How are you doing? Hi, Joe. Um, just a quick one. Have, have uh, Ziyech and Werner arrived yet? And uh, have you got a schedule for when they'll start training? But they haven't arrived. Um, as the whole country is waiting on quarantine um, news, we're also waiting on quarantine news to make sure the players can travel um, and be able to move around and it's you know and work as we'll need them to. Um, with Timo Werner, he's only finished recently, so he's uh, having a break 